Hey kids, it's Mrs. Dean. Today we are going to do a watercolor of a mountain lake with birds. So you're going to need uh, some watercolor or art paper. Um, you can use regular paper if you don't have anything. Um, you can also grab your watercolors and a brush. Uh, if you have a flat brush, like this, um, that will also be helpful, but if you don't, that's okay. All right, let's get started. Before we actually start painting today, I'm gonna show you how um, to mix up your colors. Uh, this painting is going to be um, monochromatic, meaning that we're really only going to use one color the only difference is we're going to use various um, shades of it and it's going to be kind of a a bluish green gray color so what you're going to do is you're going to dip your brush get a lot of water and you're going to take some blue and dab it on the big part of your um, lid and then you're gonna do the same thing with your green so you get kind of this nice blue green color and then I'm gonna take some of my black and I'm gonna put it over here in the corner because um, black really is an overpowering color so I don't want to mix too much in and adding some water. I'm now gonna go back and add a little bit more blue and a tiny bit more green until I get kind of this smoky gray blue. And the first part we're going to be painting is actually gonna be the lightest so you're barely going to use any of this at all. You wanna make sure that by your clean um, bowl of water, you have a paper towel so you can dab your brush and take off extra um, paint that's on there or um, extra water. Unlike some of the watercolors that we have done in the past, um, today I am not going to sketch out what I'm painting. Um, if you don't feel comfortable with that and you feel like you need to kind of outline lightly in pencil um, where your mountains are going to be and your trees, uh, feel free to do that. Um, or you can just follow along with me and you can always paint over something that you don't like. So the first thing we're going to do is to paint the mountains that are in the very, very back. And those are going to be the lightest ones. So I'm going to wet my brush and use a lot of water and not a whole lot of paint. And I'm gonna go about two thirds of the way up and just kind of very lightly make some mountains in the distance and if it looks like you can barely see this that's okay that's what that's what we want I'm gonna grab just a little bit more color and 
and using mostly water and tiniest bit of color. going to paint across. Now I don't need to go all the way to the bottom because there's going to be um, other mountains that are overlapping in here. Each time I drag my brush over I'm adding a tiny bit more water. Now I'm going to add just a little bit more paint and I'm going to go up because I want my top to be um, a little bit darker, have a little bit of an outline. And I also don't want it to look like There are lines. Now I'm barely using any of that gray blue color. because by making these really light, we're going to give the impression that they're very far away. I don't know if you can see, but I left a little bit of space on, um, all sides of my paper. That way it gives me a little bit of a border um, and I don't have to paint on my table. I'm gonna make sure that there are no um, stripes, nothing to show where my brush has been. And I get rid of those stripes by just adding a little bit of water um, and dragging my clean brush across. So I'm going to let this sit for a minute um, because it's really wet and if I add more paint at this moment it's going to uh, bleed. So in between uh, the different mountains we're just going to wait for a few minutes. The next mountain range is going to be um, just a little bit closer um, and it's actually going to appear to be slightly taller and we're going to make it just a little bit darker. And so I'm going to add a tiny bit of this black and just a little bit of purple into my color, maybe a little bit more blue. And again, I'm still going to take water and make this really watery before I put it on my paper. This mountain range is going to overlap. It's going to kind of go um, make a like a W shape in the um, on the paper. So I'm going to start out a little bit higher on this side. And I just want to create these like jagged, bumpy edges.
You know, I said that this one's going to be a little bit taller than the other mountain. Just slightly. want this to go up right here. Great thing is that if you don't really like the shape that you just made, you can go back and change it. to come up a little bit higher over here. Make sure you have enough water. And then I think I want it to come across like this. Once you have your basic shape, then you can go back and add to it. This time you're gonna take it down just a little bit farther than you did with the other mountains. Now I said that we wanted these to be a little bit darker and looking at mine, uh, mine don't appear to be much darker than my uh, first set of mountains. So I'm actually gonna go back and I'm gonna add a little bit more color to my lid. And then a little bit more black, making this a darker color, not by much. Then I'm going to go back and uh, add to my color on um, the top part of my mountain. Because it's okay if the um, bottom part is not as uh, as dark, because that's actually going to get overlapped anyway. just want to show that these are in front of the other mountains. And I want it to get a little bit lighter as I go down, so I'm just going to be brushing with water, and that'll kind of pull the color down and make it look like it's fading out.
Now again, I'm going to wait a couple of minutes uh, before the next part just to let it um, dry a little bit. If your uh, paper is really wet, you can even take your clean towel and just dab it, kind of give it this interesting texture and soak up any of the uh, extra moisture. Now these are going to be the um, the hills that are closest to us. So I'm going to uh, mix up a little bit more of my color because these are going to be the darkest of all the hills. I don't want it to be super dark, but it is going to need to be darker than this. My suggestion for this is not to make an overly complicated line to follow because this is the one that's going to be reflected in the water. And if you make it super complicated, uh, you're going to have a harder time replicating it in the reflection. So starting by just taking um, a little bit of the color with some water, we're going to kind of go up and down, making some peaks and valleys. Just think peaks and valleys, highs and lows. You can always go back and make some changes if you like. And I'm going to pull the color down. And this one I want to keep just barely below where um, my other line came. So I want to leave probably about the last um, third of the page untouched by any water because this is where our lake and our reflection is going to be. Just adding a little bit of water, a little bit of color. Now, if your, um, if your lines aren't very dark, you can even go back and add a little bit just to the very top so that there is um, a clear separation of these hills from the mountains in the distance. Now comes the hard part. We are going to do the reverse of what we just did down here. So I I'm going to use mostly water on my first go because I want this reflection to appear lighter, but also um, it's a little bit easier with mostly water. That way, if you make a mistake, you can always um, cover it up. So starting here, I'm going to 
do the mirror image. of my hills up here. Now if it's not perfect, nobody's gonna notice. This is why I suggested you not make it really complicated. And then you're going to go back and you're going to still taking a very small amount of paint and mostly water. Going to paint in the rest of this reflection. Okay, now I would let that sit for a couple of minutes um, because it is likely uh, still a little bit wet right where we're going to be painting and uh, then we'll do the next part. Next thing, um, I'm going to use my regular brush, not my flat brush right now. I'm going to do the shoreline and I want this to be fairly dark, not like black, but you're going to need to use more color, um, this grayish blue, than you have um, for your previous hills and mountains. It's always kind of a good idea to start with um, it a little bit light, not as much color, and then you can go back over it. So this part, um, we're just doing, we have our shoreline, and now we're going to do the um, kind of bumpy, hilly area around our lake. I'm just going to kind of make a squiggly line. I'll grab some more paint. And I want to draw this clear line um, just to really firm up where the edge of my water is. And I can fill in any areas that don't have color. Now we are going to do the reflection of these hills. You want the reflection to be slightly lighter, so you're going to use just a little bit more water. And just like we did the mirror image of these large hills, we're going to do the same thing um, with the smaller shoreline.
Now we really need to let this dry for a minute um, before we do the trees. So let it sit, um, it should dry fairly quickly. We are now going to make the trees and you're going to want to um, mix up some pretty dark gray. Still using that gray, blue, green combo, but more black in the mix. And you're gonna want your brush to be um, not very wet, but um, have enough moisture so that it makes a nice tip. And we're going to do them in bunches of twos and threes. And we want to make some of them appear to be behind the hill and a few of them to be sitting on top of the hill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some of these lines. These are going to be like the tree trunk. And then I'm going to um, make little tiny marks that are kind of going upward. And it's going to be fatter at the bottom and get skinnier as we go to the top. Now you want to leave a little bit of the um, white or the space in between um, that will give the impression that these are pine trees because there is a a decent amount of space in between the branches and you don't want to make them all the same size you want to leave some a little bit taller because if you ever go to a forest they're not all the same size and plus this uh, gives the impression that some are further away I'm just barely touching the paper with the tip of my brush. If you have a small brush, this would be a great time to use it. I'm doing it with a regular size brush just so that you can see that it's completely possible to do it without a specialized brush. But if you have too much water on it, it's just going to go everywhere. Next, I'm going to um, take the same color, only a more watered down version of it. And I'm going to go to just below the shoreline. So here are my hills. There's the shore where um, the water is meeting the land. And I'm going to kind of go back and forth, um, making a squiggly line. And I want this to be fatter at the bottom and skinnier at the top. And if I have a tree that's taller than another one, I should make the reflection slightly taller.
you have it, your tree reflections. Now, if you can get um, any old piece of paper, uh, we're gonna do a little bit of practice making birds. Okay. I'm going to show you how to make some birds on this um, blank piece of paper. Now the birds are really just um, a couple of simple lines. In order to make a bird look like it's flying up or down, you draw a triangle and you kind of make it have like a ball on one end. And then you make the wings, which are really just like a crescent moon shape. And there is my bird that is flying downward. Now you can do the same thing just in the other direction. Now I have a bird that's flying up. Um, another uh, bird that you can make is uh, one that's flying sideways. Now you start with kind of a curved line. And make it slightly uh, thicker towards the bottom. And then make it rounded on the top. And then give the bird kind of a belly. So just slightly wider in the middle. And then a flapping wing. And you can even put in another wing. There is a flying bird. Um, you can do the same thing and draw the head first and then like an, um, a half circle And here's a bird that is in the process of flying. Pretty simple. Uh, the last kind of bird that we're going to draw is um, another where the tail is slightly wider and then the line gets bigger thicker as you get closer to the head and this is a bird that's um, flying and its wing is flapping out I'm going to make that bird a little bit fatter. All right. 
now we're going to um, take what you just practiced. Practice a little bit um, until you feel comfortable. And then we are going to take the darkest version of your blue-green mixture. Not pure black, like a really dark gray. And we are going to uh, make some birds. And they're going to be uh, hopefully flying in different positions because it would look weird if they were all exactly the same. You don't want to use a ton of water on this. And your birds don't have to be really big. When you feel like you um, are good with birds, you can sign the bottom and you're done. Right. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. See you next time.